Welcome my dear friends. Is the notification for patent agent examination 2023 is out. Now we have the perfect time to start our preparation. And uh, let us concentrate uh, on paper 2 of patent agent examination. And let us start with the vital part of paper 2 and that is patent drafting okay so uh, we will continue and uh, today we will concentrate on its first part fine okay let us continue grasp the essence from nature and let it drip from your fingertips I can explain you the statement that you have to find out the essence or the juice that means the key part from nature and let it drip from your fingertips. Okay. For example, here you can see two beautiful pictures. One is a beautiful scenery with a lot, bunch of flowers, white flowers under the sky. And in the second picture, you can see a bunch of beautiful flowers with a very sweet color. Okay, so from these two pictures, when we can define its essence, or the key part okay and we write down somewhere we call it a draft and this is actually I am explaining you in a literal way just to link up the way we write a patent draft fine that's why the statement is like this grasp the essence from nature and let it drift from your fingertips. That's drafting. Let us continue with more details. Now friends, you can see here there are two, sorry, there are three circles. One is depicting science, one depicts art and one depicts law. The end, these three circles are intermingled with each other okay and we can say drafting or patent drafting actually patent drafting when it is to be shown in a pictorial way it should be it should accompany accompany both art science and law that's why we can uh, define patent drafting in a in this way okay so it is a combined patent drafting is a combination of art science and law that means uh, the main part is science which indicates invention the way of writing or the skill of writing is the art and the manner in which it is to be written that means the legal way it's the law. Fine. I hope it is clear now. Let us proceed. What is patent drafting? Now we will try to proceed via legal way. Or we can say uh, in the world of patents, how do we proceed? Okay. So what is patent drafting means? Patent drafting is the process of writing the patent description and claims. Okay. And when the patent is issued, that means when the patent is granted, the draft is the specification part of the document. Fine. Now, we must know what is patent specification. Patent specification is a statement made by the applicant. And actually, this is a unilateral statement made by the applicant. It describes the invention and decides 
the scope of protection of the patent. Okay, so what is the invention that is described here and also it decides the scope of protection of the patent. That means what is the limit of uh, protection of the particular invention uh, which is called as a patent after issue or after it is granted. It, uh, so we can say that patent specification uh, decides the scope of the protection of the patent. Fine. Now, what are the types of patent specifications? Okay. Every patent specification or we can say every patent application is to be accompanied by a provisional or a complete specification. Right. And for this statement actually there is an exception. What is the exception? The exception is international patent applications. And for this you please refer section 7, subsection 4 of the Patents Act 1970. Because section 7, subsection 4 says every such application not being a convention application or an application filed under the PCT that is Patent Cooperation Treaty designating India shall be accompanied by a provisional or a complete specification. Fine. That means for this type of uh, application, that means conventional, uh, conven sorry, convention application, not conventional, uh, be clear, not being a convention application or a PCT application, we can say. So, uh, this type of international patent applications are an exception. That means, this, the above statement or we can say here, this statement is not mandatory for the international patent applications. So, this statement is mandatory for every other patent applications other than international patent applications as mentioned in section 7, subsection 4 of the Patents Act 1970. Okay. Now, you can very well understand this statement that every patent application is to be accompanied by a provisional or a complete specification. I think it is clear. Let us proceed. Now, <clears throat> we will go uh, or we can, uh, we will proceed in a more detailed way. Fine. So, provisional specification is filed when the invention is at its initial stage. We can say either the invention is at its initial stage or uh, it is not completed or it is incomplete, yet to be completed. Fine. Now, when the applicant feels that it is the time for the invention to be noticed by the public, he or she files it. Fine. Its main intention is to gain the priority date for an invention. What is the main intention? The intention is to get a get the priority date for the, for the invention. The applicant gets a time period of 12 months from the date of filing of the provisional application or specification to file a complete specification. Fine. That means a time gap or a time period of 12 months is gained in this way. Fine. And for this friends, please refer section 9, subsection 1 of the Patents Act 1970 where the title of section 9 is provisional and complete specifications. Fine. Okay. Let us proceed. Now, provisional specification continue. Contents of the provisional specification is, is the base for the complete specification. Just remember this friends. Contents of the provisional specification is the base for the complete specification. That means if any new matter is found in the complete specification, then the priority date of the claim of that new matter will be the date on which the complete specification was filed. Fine. And not on the date when the provisional specification was filed. I hope it is pretty clear and for this please refer section 11 of the Patents Act 1970 where the title for section 11 is priority dates of claims of a complete specification. Fine. Let us proceed. Now the same thing that means provisional specification is still continued. The patent can be revoked on the grounds that the claim of a complete specification is not fairly based on the matter disclosed in the specification. Either provisional or complete. Okay. That means this statement 
provides us the information on what basis a patent can be revoked. And for this, please refer section 64, subsection 1 of the Patents Act 1970, where section 64, or we can say the title for section 64 is revocation of patents. Fine. Got it? Let us proceed. Okay. Uh, it is still continued, right? Provisional specification starts with the title. That, that means how it is written. Okay. Provisional specification starts with the title and the description of the invention. Fine. Now, it starts with the preamble. Uh, just take a look here. The following uh, the following specification describes an invention. In this way, you can write. So, uh, you may have a question in your mind that uh, what, is, what does the uh, preamble mean? The preamble is, is the, in, it is the inter introductory part. It is the introductory part of a statute or a deed stating its purpose, aims and justification. So, just remember this. Fine. Now, I have some questions for you. The first question is, do provisional specifications have claims? The straight answer is no. A big no. And uh, the second uh, question for you is, are provisional specifications examined? And the answer is also a big no. Because only the complete specifications are examined. And only the complete specifications have claims. Fine. I hope it is 100% clear now. Okay. Oh, so friends, thank you all, my dear friends, for watching my video and listening to me so carefully. Please like, share and subscribe my channel. And write down your valuable compliments and comments which always inspires me to proceed further, further and further. Okay friends, thank you so much. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.